Now we're going to work on that base problem I was telling you about. While it may not be too obvious in the mix, especially with the kick drum cranked up from the last chapter, the bass that was recorded off the floor that day was poorly intonated and tends to sound thin on certain notes and beefier on others. While we can always re-record the bass, we might be able to salvage it by limiting the fuller, lower frequencies of the bass and bring them back up in volume when we're done getting them under control. The second half of the bass part I have looped here is full and deep, while the first half is more bright and twangy so we might do well to limit both the highs and lows separately to control the clickiness and the subcomponent of the sound. The difference, again, will be more obvious when soloed. That's a pretty big discrepancy in the frequency between the two halves. I'm going to load up the Blue Cat Audio MB5 Dynamics plugin as an insert on the bass and get this thing under control. So right out of the gate, with the default setting, I can adjust the levels of the lowest frequencies. But what I want to do is find out where those lowest frequencies stick out the most. To get the best view of how the dynamics will be affected, watch the readout of the dynamics display and the individual bands as you adjust your crossover. Remember that we're only hoping to control the dynamic between the offending notes and the proper full ones. It seems like the biggest divide is below 120 Hz. Remember that you will tend to overcompress by setting too high of a ratio or too low of a threshold, so it's always a good idea to recognize that you may want to back off a bit once you've found what you think is the right threshold, ratio, and knee for the selected band. Now if you want to fix that clicky part of the bass to keep it consistent, we can clearly see where the highs drop off in the spectrum and where we can start to attack them dynamically. If I solo the highs, I can more easily hear the effect on the highs as I want to control them, not crush them. The lower mids seem a little honky in contrast to the rest of the sound but this is more of a level issue, so I can simply bring down the band to keep the frequency in line. However, since the rest of the bands are under control and the lower mids are not, it might be wise to leave a little bit of safety limiting on this band. Now that my ears have had a good long break from the kick drum sound, it's obvious that it's way too loud when I unsolo the bass. While I can always introduce makeup gain to the bass track, I think the new beefier kick and bass need to come down overall to keep balance with the more natural, untreated sound of the rest of the mix. Having all of this control can make you sometimes doubt if you improved the sound or destroyed it. Instead of simply disabling the plugin, you can use the wet dry balance in the master section to see if you've improved the sound, destroyed it, or if maybe you should mix the original with your treated sound for the best possible result. If you're still not confident in making dynamic decisions with the MB5, start with the most appropriate preset and see where it takes you. Like for instance, with the preset Bass Compress Highs, I can quickly make a threshold adjustment and appropriately adjust the highs. Remember, this window isn't here for nothing. You need to keep watch on the knee of the compression to make sure you aren't suffocating the band. If you see the meter peaking periodically in bursts, but the overall level doesn't seem too hot, just throw on the master limiter to catch any unwanted spikes in level. Now that I've treated the bass and kick, I'm going to compare the original mix with the one treated with the MB5 Dynamics. While I always tend to have the last element of the mix that I worked on be up too loud in the mix, I think this is a definite improvement over the untreated mix. Listen to the mix without the two instances of the Blue Cat MP5 Dynamics. Now listen to it with the MP5s. Again, you can see that I have the last two things that I worked on up too high in the mix, but essentially short of that, the MB5 has saved the day. 
In the next chapter, we're going to discuss using the MB5 as a tool to clean up a group of sounds.